for the men. I'm Sean with it alongside Bill Grundler. And the top three men from each heat. Moving on, that was the first heat. We tested some distance, we tested some strength, we're testing some speed right now. Speed and agility with these guys, that's what it's gonna come down to. What we're really looking forward to here are those guys that have that football background, see how hard they can cut cut around these these uh, these pilings and really sprint through the finish line. Asia Barto, Jordan Tryon, and Z.A. Anderson, the top three men. So Asia Barto, the big man, moving on. The top three. Moving on, this is a bracket-style event, and here's the replay. It is okay to make contact with those pilots. You see Asia Barto doing just that. Smart move. And Barto got across the finish line first as he made him ground on that straightaway, and now the second qualifying heat ready to go. Zachary Forrest, Roy Gamboa, Albert Dominic LaRouche, Justin Allen, Miko Aropa, and Brandon Swan all in this one. And it looks like lane one, Brandon Swan, lane three, Justin Allen. We'll have to see who came in in third place. Again, it's gonna be the guys that are able to cut the tightest to these pilings. And if they hit it, that's okay. That's a smart move. Make that distance short and get through that finish line as fast as they can. So it's Allen Gamboa and Brandon Swan moving on. So Brandon Swan, the man from Australia who spent a lot of time playing rugby. So you know he knows his way around a couple of obstacles and knows how to cut and change directions. So he three now on deck as we continue to move through the qualifying round quarterfinals up next Ben Smith in the middle of the field did very well finishing second in the burden run I tell you what the guy I'm looking forward to right now is Neil Maddox he's had his football background arena football background he's never been able to showcase that I hope he can do it here Neil Maddox had a stint with the San Jose Sabercats in the arena football league lining up for this one you can see he's using a different start than all the other guys. He knows sprints on the football field. Maddox lining up like you would see a defensive end, that hand in the air to help him get some momentum. And Maddox now making contact with those pylons, going through them. It looks wow. like Neil Maddox and Ben Smith are in a race wow. first. Smith was there, as was David Levy in lane four, but Maddox looks like he was in the top three. So it's Levy, Bogard, wow. Michael wow. Bogard out of Asia, and Ben Smith, your top three. So Maddox does not move on, so he is out in the qualifying round. You know, if you're not in the top three, you just happen to be in a fast heat. Wow, that really shortens up this event for you quickly. Neil Maddox was moving, no doubt about it, but Ben Smith just edged him out. So much speed on, on Ben Smith and David Levy, so much speed. So there's a look at the finish. Leave that's close. Wow. It was a three-way tie, and Neil Maddox was just in the back there on that photo finish. Remember, we have electronic timing here, so it is precise. So your top three, wow. TV, Michael Mogard and Ben Smith, all 11.3 seconds. So even though he may have been one of the fastest people, he could end up with 25th place just because he got kicked out of that fast heat. You're not scored against the rest of the field. You're scored against your heat. It's a bracket-style event. We're in the qualifiers. The top three men from each heat move on to the next round. Fourth qualifying heat, Marcus Hendren, a man with a football background. Chad McKay, another big guy who can chew up some ground in this heat as well. Fourth heat underway. Wow. Dan Bailey in lane number one, the former collegiate sprinter. He's going to finish first. Marcus Hendren second. And in lane number five, it looked like Marcus Philly edging out McKay and Bridges for the third spot. Wow. So it's Bailey, Hendren, and Philly. So Josh Bridges is out. Look at Dan Bailey move around these pylons. You know, we always wondered about that. He's an all-out sprinter, a 400-meter sprinter. But the movement he had there was incredible. Cut so tight and was start and stop so quickly. Unbelievable job by him, so fast. Dan Bailey had time to look back, and he was in first place. So Bailey moving on, as does Marcus Hendren and Marcus Philly. So Bailey would have beat the previous heat by two tenths of a second, just showing you how close all of these athletes are. Heat number five.
As we continue to move through the qualifying rounds, Kyle Kasperbauer, former football player, and Lucas Parker in lane six needs to start putting together some strong finishes here if he wants to work his way into contention. E5, underway. Wow, Out of the yeah, look at that speed. And it looks like in lane five, it's going to be Kyle Kasperbauer winning this heat. Again, there's it that football close. background. It was close for the other two spots, but those football players, if you've seen these pylons before, and usually you see them in NFL training camps, college football practices, defensive linemen, a lot of players use them to learn how to turn a corner. And here's Kyle Kasperbauer getting his shoulder to them, dropping a hand. Well, he looks really good here. He just dropped down nice and low, kept a center of gravity close to the ground so he didn't lose balance, and just ultimate speed through the finish line there. So Casper Bauer, Parker is there, and in lane number two, Travis Mayer also moving on. I know Lucas likes the sprints also. It's nice to see him in there as well. So Lucas Parker needed that. He's had some disappointing finishes through four events. He needs to start scoring some points to move up the leaderboard. Sixth and final heat, or sixth of eight qualifying heats. Rich Froning, the two-time defending champion, in the middle of the field. Keep an eye on lane five. Tyson Takasaki, former college receiver at the University of Manitoba. Yeah, I'm going to put my money on Scott Panchik on this one. Running back, two-time national champion for uh, University of Mount of uh, Mount Union. Froning going with that three-point stance. Six heat underway. Froning Whoa. flips but regains his footing. He's still out front. But it is Scott Panchik. Froning looks like he may have been second. And then Tyson Takasaki in lane five was also up there. Eric McGee was in contention as well. So it's Panchik, Froning, and McGee just edging out Tyson Takasaki. Scott Panchik, I knew he would do great there. He looked unbelievable. But what, the story of that one, Rich Froning slips, gets back up, and still comes in second. That does not bode well for the rest of the competition. The guy's going up against Rich Froning. You know, he's just an everyday athlete. He does everything well, but look at that. Look at the speed. So here's the slip from Froning on the third turn. His feet go out from under him, but he was still able to get up very quickly and stay right behind Scott Panchik and move himself into the quarterfinals. Top three, Panchik, Froning, and Eric McGee <laughs> both tying. He, know, he knows how lucky. Nine seconds. He knows how lucky he was on that one. Look at that face. Heat number seven. Matt Chan, the second place finisher from last year in lane number four. Five men in this heat. Garrett Fisher, he's also there. He is in lane number three. And here comes Garrett Fisher, but on the outside in lane one, it's Gary Helmick in lane number five. It was Ben Stoneberg, and I think Fisher may have edged out Matt Chan for third place. So it's Helmick, Fisher, and Stoneberg moving on. Another slip here as more and more athletes have been through this course. This ground now is getting a little bit chewed up. Yeah, right there, Gary Helmick. Here's a baseball player. I wouldn't normally think of the cutting speed like that for a baseball player, but he was moving. Nice low, nice, nice low attack on the pilings was moving so quickly on that sprint. So Gary Helvick spent some time with the Baltimore Orioles minor league affiliate, and now he is here competing at the Reebok Crosser Games. Jason Khalifa, your overall leader, heat number eight. Daniel Petro, and then another former champion, Graham Holberg, and Wes Pyatt at a CrossFit Inferno in lane number two. There's the man who at one point had the fastest time at the pool event. Phil is an athlete you know a lot about. Uh, that's right. We did a lot of training with Wes. And, you know, with his background in football and baseball, he is fast. I can tell you I run against him all the time. He's quick. I'm looking for some big things here, Wes. Let's go. Final qualifying heat underway. Jason Khalifa just running over these pylons. Not the most graceful, but here comes Wes Pyatt. He's battling for the lead. Pyatt is in. 
in lane number four it was Daniel Petro, and then I think in lane one it looks like Austin Maliallo. So it's Pyatt, Graham, Holberg finishing second, and Austin Maliallo in third. So Jason Kalipa and Daniel Petro will not move on. So Wes Pyatt finishing in first. You called it, this guy can run. He was waiting for this event. He wanted something with some speed, but look at that again, a slip and still was able to recover. Just very, very athletic overall and a lot of speed. So Khalifa, meanwhile, we knew this was not his event. This is not a fast guy, but he did a good job of just sort of bowling these things <laughs> there's, over. There's oh. the bull in the china shop they were used to right there. Again, you know what? Not a bad showing, but the way they set this up with losing, you know, if you're in the bottom three or the bottom two, you get kicked out. It's just really hard to beat some of these quick so guys. Wyatt, then Holmberg, and then Austin Maliallo rounding out the top three. So Jason Kalipa will now suffer his worst finish of the game so far. A lot of guys chasing him are still alive, especially Rich Froning. So Froning can now make up some ground here. He came into this event trailing Jason Kalipa. You know all those guys. 91 points. You know all those guys at Tennessee Tech right now. If he doesn't do well in this oh. you know he's going to get oh, a rasp. Don't want to go back home. to that. They're yeah. going to make him run cones and they're going to make him <laughs> run around pylons for the the rest of the of the summer here. And then right there, right behind him, the natural athlete, Ben Smith. I tell you what, you can't count him out of anything. He's been good in the swim. He's been good in pulling. He's been good in sprinting. He's just an all-around athletic kid. Let's go down to Rory McKernan on the field. Thanks, Sean. Hey, not too surprising that this wasn't Khalifa's event. Might have seen that coming. But Rich Froning, I just talked to him after that first heat. Yeah, I looked at him and I said, man, what happened on that slip? He sort of shook it off and gave it a smile, but you could tell that he was nervous. He knows he really needs this event to make some ground. He's only 31 points back from Garrett Fisher. He can make it up here. The thing that's surprising me, Sean, we talked about it after the women, is that no one's actually making contact with these pads. The only person was actually Lucas Parker, who was pulling him into himself. But these guys, I think, they can make up more ground on the turns if they're pushing these things away. So we'll see if anybody puts that into play. Watch Jordan Troyan, the kid who won the swim event, actually took first in his heat, and he took the time to look around. I thought he was going to do a high step and an end zone dance. Uh, he looked pretty confident. I said, what's up with that? And he said, hey, you know, I knew that I had it in the bag, and I was just conserving a little bit of energy. So that kind of confidence from a rookie who's already taken first in an event is going to end up pretty nicely. Uh, I'm loving the zigzag sprint. Thanks, Rory. So the athletes who move on will have one more crack at this obstacle course. Quarterfinals coming up next. And Rich Froning has a chance to chase down Jason Kalipa. Four from the Subhub Center when we return.
Back at the StubHub Center in Carson, California, as the men's zigzag sprint continues. We are on to the quarterfinals. I'm Sean Woodland alongside Bill Grundler. This is the fifth of 12 scored events, and it's a quick one. It is a quick one. I love when they bring in these, these normal workout sprint type things. We got a 50 meter sprint with four obstacles, basically that diamond set up, so these guys are having to dodge in and out in an all out sprint to the end. We are checking for two things right here sprint or speed and some, uh, some accuracy. How can they get around that cone and get moving quickly? 50 yards with four obstacles. It's a four round bracket style tournament. And the top three men in every heat advance. We just got done with the qualifiers. We are now on to the quarterfinals, four heats of quarterfinals, and then two heats of semifinals, and finally one final heat to determine the winner. And unlike the sled pull that we saw earlier in the burden run, athletes are wearing cleats for this event. If they didn't have the cleats on, I think it would be a much more interesting event. They'd be slip sliding all over the place. But you know what? They need this for that heavy duty cut. Uh, we are totally testing that transitional side work with these guys rather than just a straight sprint straight ahead. So it's really going to test them. I'm hoping no one gets hurt out of this. You know, they just had a, a lot of hard work with the rowing and with all the running and all that earlier. Uh, but I can tell you what, these guys are flying right now. We are still seeing some athletes slip. Rich Froning was one of them. There was a little bit of moisture on this field because of the rain, not only last night, but earlier today. But he was able to make up finished second in his heat. We've also had multiple people running around on this field, and as that happens, it gets a little bit chewed up, and, and footing does not become as sure as it was when we first started. But again, you can see who the really athletic, talented type people are. They're able to just hop, hop right back up, not even break their stride, and get in there. But I'll tell you what, the football players are definitely, this is their event right here. I mean, we're seeing them time and time again in each of the heats just flying through those cones. I'm expecting to see them, you know, cut in, into it a little bit tighter than what they're doing. Uh, but again, they're moving so fast. You know, they're, they're, they're quick, that start and stop. It's insane how, how fast they're moving. They're announcing the participants in the quarterfinal heats. To the crowd here at the soccer stadium at the StubHub Center, Daniel Petro in the white jersey talking over some strategy with some of his fellow competitors. Z.A. Anderson is there on your left. Amanda Krenz is on the field. She's standing by with Dan Bailey. Amanda? All right, Dan, thanks for joining us. I want to ask you about your footwear because you guys got to wear cleats for this event. Is that helping you out a lot, do you think? Oh, uh, it's essential. On, uh, on grass like this, when you're doing hard cutting at full speed, if you didn't have uh, cleats or something like that, you'd be slipping all over the place. So, yeah. Sprinting is obviously nothing new for you, but maybe these pylons out here are new. So how are you maneuvering that? I'm maneuvering them okay. I'm a straightaway guy. That's what I, you know, did my specialty in. So the speeds definitely helps. I just need to stay consistent, try not to slip, and run hard. That's all I'm here to do. What about agility work? Have you been training with any of that? Oh, I always do agility work. It's just fun to do. Uh, it's a great stimulus, even for longer distance running. The faster you are, the easier it is to run at a slightly slower pace. So, uh, yeah, I do this kind of stuff. Don't usually take this long of a break, but maybe it'll help me. You'll be getting going here pretty soon. I'll let you go. Dan, thanks so much. Sean? Thanks, Amanda. Dan Bailey. Back-to-back sixth-place finishes at the CrossFit Games, looking to make his way onto the podium in 2013. Scott Panchik, one of the men who won his heat. You know, we talked about the football players earlier. What's great about him is this is his specialty right here. You know, you, you can't just be just a running back. You have to be a running back on a really good team, which means you really need to be a good running back. So you saw his start speed. You saw his cut speed. You saw his all-out sprint speed. I am looking for him to be in the finals of this event. So Scott Panchik comes in to this event in 14th place. He was... One of the names that was thrown around as we were moving through the Open and the Regionals as a guy who could possibly push Rich Froning off the top of the podium. We don't just come into the CrossFit Games as a rookie and come out fourth. You know, you, you definitely, you've definitely got something working right for you. What he did this year is he actually got himself a coach, actually started training exactly in CrossFit-type activities so that he could come here for the Games. Not just his natural, but what he actually has. And Panchik will be lining up against a couple of other former football players. 
Marcus Hendren and Kyle Kasperbauer, also Roy Gamboa, who started training in CrossFit after he decided to give up his dream of playing professional football, and it's working out pretty well for him. Not too shabby, right? Not shabby. Kyle's ready to go, and I want to see that football speed with him really go for it. First quarter final heat underway, and Kasperbauer is really throwing his shoulders into those obstacles, and it is Marcus Hendren, Scott Panchik, and then we'll have to see who finished third. It was Gamboa, Kasperbauer, and Brandon Swan. But Kasperbauer, Panchik wow. was there, and Marcus Hendren, the he, former football players, ripping through this He was course. moving. He had such a great start. I mean, there wasn't any stutter at all. You can see some of these guys with a little bit of a bobble or a, a slip at the beginning. He was just like a lightning bolt off the off the start. Quickly went through those. Quickly went through those cones. I mean, look at that. Just just a blistering off the starting line. Nice and low. Didn't lose any speed. And then just poured it on in the end. Wow. And Casper Bauer, one of the athletes who's consistently making contact with those pilots. So there's Marcus Hendren. He finishes first. Panchik coming across in second. And it was Roy Gamboa who finished in third. So those three now will move on to the semifinals. Top three officially from the heat. Hendrick, Panchik, and Gamboa. Hendren, 11 seconds flat, the best time we've seen so far. Second of four quarterfinal heats now on deck. Lucas Parker in lane one needs to continue to do well here. Second heat underway. Garrett Fisher, closest to you. And now it looks like Asia Barto battling along with Gary Helvick, but it was Barto, it looks like, who finished first. Helvick was there as well. So it's Barto, Helvick, and David Levy who edges out Jordan Troyan for the third spot. Helvick and Levy tying for second place. So that man, Lucas Parker, will not move on, but Asia Barto will. He's doing great. I was not expecting that he's such a big guy. You'd think it'd take him a little bit longer to get going, but he just, you know, nice, easy cuts. Look, he looks like he's just you know, cruising through there, but it's the opening speed there in the end that allows him to get through there to the end. You know, we could not do this event if we didn't have these guys all on chip timers. They're all down to tenths of a second right now. There's Jordan Troyan, who just got edged out. You saw how he was just emptying the tank there to try to get himself across the finish line and into the semifinals. But it wasn't enough, so it's Bartel, Helmick, and Levy. So Lucas Parker, once again, fails to move on. Third heat, Froning, Holberg, Mogard, Allen, Anderson, and Petro. No slipping up this time by the champ at all. Can he get in there, though? That's going to be a photo finish for first place. It looks like Michael Mogard, the former University of Iowa Hawkeye, holding his hamstring and now going down to the ground. So Mogard may have hurt himself there. C.A. Anderson looking at the scoreboard. So it's going to be Mogard at first, Allen and Z.A. Anderson, your top three. So Froning, Holberg, and Petro will not move on. That is not what Rich wanted right there. The champ needed those points to get back in there. But I'll tell you what, with the speed of these guys, just not enough, just not enough. Michael Bogart in the gray shirt coming through, but shortly after he crossed the finish line, he grabbed it, what I think was his left hamstring, and sort of hobbled along a little bit, and now on the side, he's sort of walking a little gingerly. But we had a ton of ties in that heat. But there's your heat winner, Michael Bogard, grabbing at his left hamstring. But look at these times and how close this was. It came down to hundreds of a second here. But your top three were Bogard, Allen, and Anderson. So Rich Froning, who had a chance to gain some ground on Kalipa, will not move on. But Michael Bogard does. But we'll have to see how he can perform now in the semifinals, as it looks like he may have hurt himself. What we've been seeing in a lot of the other heats are the top people are doing 11.2, 11.3. All That whole heat was 11.6 in, in greater. So not a real fast heat, relative, relatively speaking, to everybody else. Here comes the fourth heat. It's McGee, Mayer, Smith, Bailey, Pyatt, and Philly. And it's Dan Bailey coming in first place. Pyatt was up there. 
but it's Bailey Pyatt finishes second, and then Marcus Philly out of Northern California finishes third. Byer, Smith, and McGee will not move on. Wow, the speed of these guys. I mean, what's great right there, Wes Pyatt just coming through right behind Dan Bailey. I didn't think he was going to be able to catch him, but I'll tell you what, they were all moving. But the speed of Dan Bailey on that last straightaway is out of control. He's so fast. We had a three-way tie for third place, but it's Marcus Philly who had the fastest time. We went down to hundreds of a second. Dan Bailey finishes first, just misses going to 11 flat, and Wes Pyatt moving on to the semifinals. But well, Dan Bailey is going to be tough to catch here with that straightaway speed. Look at that time, 11.1. 11.1 has been one of the fastest splits that we've had out of all the heats so far. So if he can keep that up, I think this is going to be his event. We had a shuttle sprint last year. Dan Bailey would have won his heat, but he pulled up at the last second and let a couple people pass him. So now he's running straight through that finish line, and he look like, looks like he's making up for that mistake he made last year. So Dan Bailey on track looking for his first win of the competition. Let's go down to Rory McKernan on the field. Thanks, guys. I'm actually standing at the finish line. You can see where this strip of grass has been pulled up. So it's when the athlete's bracelet crosses the finish line. Seen a couple of guys trying to get tricky, almost giving it the diving finish, but it's not really working for him. It's just the fastest athletes that are getting through. I had a chance to talk to our former overall winner, Jason Kalipa. We'll see if that, that stands up. He was pretty dejected. Him and Matt Chan, second fittest man from last year, both said, man, I wish that I had a second go at this thing. But the bottom line is that's what the CrossFit game is all about, adapting quickly. You only get one shot at it. Sean, we'll go back to you. Thanks, Rory. Two-time defending champ, Rich Froning, talking with a couple of his fellow athletes there. Graham Holbrook is in that group. But Dan Bailey is one of the men to beat. He's moving on to the semifinals. We'll have that round coming up next when we come back to the StubHub Center. Back at the soccer stadium at the Subhub Center in Carson, California. The men's zigzag sprint continues. We move on to the semifinal round. The two-time defending champion, Rich Froning, is out. Plenty of men trying to chase him down. Here's a look at the men who have the best chance of knocking him off the top of the podium. The deepest field in CrossFit Games history stands between Rich Froning and a third straight victory. Two former champions will try to knock Froning off the top of the podium. 2008 champion Jason Kalipa is coming off a dominant performance at the Northern California Regional. 2010 champion Graham Holmberg 
is the last man to defeat Froning at the game. Scott Panchik exploded onto the CrossFit landscape last year and finished fourth at the games as a rookie. He is primed for a run at the podium this year. A pair of games runners up are also looking to supplant Froning. Matt Chan finished second in 2012 and is coming off a win at the Southwest Regional. Josh Bridges finished second at the games in 2011 and is back after a knee injury kept him out of competition last year. His recent performances have led many to believe that he is the man with the best chance of derailing Froning's run at another title. There's Michael Mogard who injured his hamstring. Rory McKernan has more on his condition. Thanks, Sean. Yeah, Michael Mogard pulled both hamstrings. He said on the first sprint, he pulled the left one. On the second one, he pulled his right one. Dave Castro came over, consulted him, said, hey, listen, you don't have to do this. You can walk it if you want to. And Mogard said, no, man, I qualified. I'm here. I'm going to go through with it. So, um, you know, these athletes, it means a great deal to them. They get into this uh, fittest on earth challenge. They're at the CrossFit Games, and maybe it's a one-time shot. So Michael Mogard, you're going to see, take the court with uh, two severely pulled hamstrings. Michael Mogard, who currently lives in Brunei, moved from Iowa to there when a friend of his needed help opening up an affiliate. So that's quite a relocation to undergo. And now he's having both of his hamstrings heavily taped. I don't think he was planning on this, but you know what? That right there just goes to show the testament to these athletes. They they understand what this is. You know, this is an important thing being here. It's a, it's an honor to be here. And I think, you know, if you're going to go out, you're going to go out fighting. I think it's what these guys are all about. Michael Mogard receiving attention. He won his quarterfinal heat and now has about nine pounds of bandage on both of his <laughs> legs, but he's going to give it a go. He's a former collegiate baseball player at the University of Iowa, and not the first time he's shown up on an ESPN network. He actually played in the Little League World Series. Yeah, we were talking to him earlier. He said the last time he got to do one of those stylized interviews is when he was 12 years old. You know, for the uh, the baseball world or the uh, Little League World Series, and he had fun with that. Then he said it was pretty fun coming back and getting asked some of the same questions, being in front of the lights and everything again. Michael Bogard in the semifinals, along with 11 other athletes. So the athletes who are making it to the semifinals are now being announced to the crowd. So we actually have a tie. We're going to have a sprint off. Rory, what's going on down there? Yeah, guys, we just got word. Dave Castro consulting with Tony Budding, uh, director of CrossFit's media, and, and as well as the scoring people. And he came out, and all he said was, we have a unique situation. We're going to have a sprint off. So you see Justin Allen, Graham Holmberg, Ben Smith, and Marcus Philly all going back to the starting line. It looks like they're going to be in a fight for their lives to advance to the next round. So this is being judged by cameras only. So in CrossFit tradition, constantly varied, and that's exactly what we have here, something outside of the box. We have a sprint off to determine one other position in the semifinals. All right, I have to put my money on Marcus Feeler on this one. He's the, a, a soccer player, played a lot of college his whole life, played through college, young kid. So he's not far from that. I'm anxious to see. You know he wants to get back in there right now. So Graham Holmberg, the 2010 champion, is out there. Ben Smith is out there. And so it looks like it's Holmberg and Z.A. Anderson in the first tie break. So two positions available. That's Justin Allen, pardon me. And it's going to be Justin Allen edging out Graham Holmberg. So just bear with us. We're just trying to figure this thing out. They're throwing all kinds of events at us. So it's Justin Allen and Graham Holmberg. And it was Justin Allen who is going to move on. So here's the replay. Justin Allen is a guy with a football background as well. That's right. You know what? You can tell. You can see the way they start. His turns were nice and low. He was just so quick, and that's exactly what he needed to get out there in front of Graham. And then he just opened up the speed. Yeah, Holmberg looked like he may have gotten through those four pylons first, but then on the straightaway, Justin Allen turning on the speed. So now he's going to the semifinals. So now we have Marcus Philly on the left, Ben Smith on the right. Ten seconds. 
You know, it's incredible. The false start. That's the first false start we've had out of all the women and the men. So, again, a unique situation. We haven't really even had that yet. The reason we went to the buzzer is so we could eliminate any advantages that people were getting from jumping the 3 2 1 count. So they'll have to reset. So, Ben Smith on the right, Marcus Philly on the left. The winner of this, we're assuming, goes on to the semifinals. Yeah, so if Ben Smith jumps again, then he DQs himself on this one. Not what he wants to ha what he wants to have happen after getting this, you know, this, this extra little sprint off here. And while this is going on, everyone else getting more of a chance to rest. Smith and Philly. Both to the first pylon at the same time. Through the second one, Smith looks wow. like he might be opening up a bit of a lead. Ben Smith into the straightaway first, and it's going to be Ben Smith. Moving on to the semifinal. Man, that was a great move, and what allowed him to get up there short or quicker was he didn't he didn't take a nice big sweeping turn. It was a quick turn on that last cone and a straight ahead, whereas Marcus kind of went up nice and wide, and that made too much distance for him. Nice and tight on the cones, and look at this one last cut, straight in. Ben Smith selling out. Ben Smith is going to the semifinals, and now Ben Smith has actually now had to do more work than everybody else in the semifinals and will not have as much time to recover. The rest of the athletes who are in the semifinals have just been sitting watching this thing and getting more recovery time than they should have when this event was conceived. You know, I, I, yeah, that, that's that kind of is terrible for him, absolutely. But you know what? If you want to stay in the game and they give you that opportunity, you got to take it. And these, it's not like these guys haven't done an extra sprint or two. It's okay. So now Allen and Smith on to the semifinals. And this sort of harkens back to the days at Aromas when things just kind of happened and we went with it. Let's just make them work. We're going to make it work. There's Michael Bogard. And you know he wanted to see this because he got a little extra time to recover. Both of his hamstrings are injured. So now the athletes who are in the semifinals are getting ready to take the field. We'll have two semifinal heats of six men, and then they'll move on to one final heat. Rory McCurden has more. Ro? Thanks, guys. I was just talking to the director of the CrossFit Games, Dave Castro. Here's what just happened. All four of the men you just saw in the sprint off tied to the thousandth of a second. So it was a, it was a decision on the spot by Dave Castro to have them do this sprint off. The two men who won their individual heats are going to now move on. So Justin Allen gets his bid back into the CrossFit Games and Ben Smith will stick around as well. But it just goes to show you, you never know exactly what's going to happen and just how amazingly and evenly matched some of these athletes are. Tied to the thousandth of a second. Wow, that is impressive. So Ben Smith coming in in sixth overall. So this is huge for him now to get himself back into this competition. Well, they're back in, but what, what blows my mind is what if we didn't have these chip timers? Here we are. We thought we were being all great. You could show it up on the screen that they, you know, to the tenth of the second, but they tied to the thousandth of a second. So that's so incredible how close they were. It's like, what else are you going to do but make them run off? So that was a great decision by Dave Castro, director of training. I think that was a, a, a fair and, and you know what? That's the way it should have been. So that, even though no one really knew what was going on, it, was a, it looked like a decision on the fly. That was the perfect decision to make. Well, ben Smith had his best finish of the games in 2011 when he finished third. This is a kid who used to work out in his parents' garage in front of a fridge. Now he owns his own affiliate. I graduated school last year, got my degree, and this was kind of my dream job. I don't feel like I work. It's awesome. I was just happy to be able to have my family here to support me and help me out with this because I know, you know, I'm not doing it all by myself at all. I'm doing all the programming. My parents are helping me clean the gym, keep it tidy, and with all the business side, they're helping me with that too. What I love about CrossFit is that it's more than just a sport and it's more than just a workout. I mean, it's kind of a way of life. You know, you, you eat well, you train hard, you push yourself. It teaches you so much about yourself. I love that competitive environment. And if I didn't have that, I don't know really what I'd, you know, what I'd be doing. I, I'd play baseball up until college and then uh, got into CrossFit. And I just love that competition environment. You know, even though it makes you nervous and it makes you jittery and it makes you sick, kind of even, I just, I, I enjoy it. I like it. I like competing and I like giving it my all.
So Ben Smith is still alive, as is that man. Michael Mogard, his hamstrings heavily taped. We'll have the semi-final heats when we return to the Stub Up Center in Carson, California. Back at the Subhub Center in Carson, California, the men's zigzag sprint, the fifth of 12 scored events here at the 2013 Reebok CrossFit Games. I'm Sean Woodland alongside Bill Grundler. Our first semi-final heat, six men start, three men move on to the finals. Michael Mogard in lane one is running with both of his hamstrings heavily taped. Dan Bailey in lane three with that great straightaway speed, always a threat anytime you have an event where there's running. He, he's been so fast, but you know what? He's been in, this whole heat is nuts now. Now that we're down to the semifinals, we've knocked a lot of the slower guys out. This is all about blasting speed. We saw Wes Pyatt, we saw, we have Asia Barto, and Justin Allen, who just made his way back into it, he's also in this heat. So this is a full heat right here. There's the big man himself. Asia Barto, six foot five, so he can chew up a lot of real estate with every step. Top three men here moving on to the final heat in lane two. That's Gary Helmick looking for his best finish so far here at the games. He's been flying through all of these heats, so. And that's oh. Michael Mogard, both of his hamstrings heavily taped. First semifinal heat underway, and Mogart in lane one looking pretty strong despite having his hamstrings injured. Now Dan Bailey's first in the straightaway. Mogart is hanging. Michael Mogart, a gutsy performance, wow. and he may have gotten himself into the finals. Wow. Michael Mogart may have gotten in. We'll have to wait for the official results, but he does get in. Michael Mogart finishing that third is behind insane. Bailey and Marto. That is insane. That must have been an insane tape job is what that had to have been. Could you pull both hamstrings and still make it to the finals? Are you kidding me? Michael Mogard gunning it out, walking gingerly. Judge Joe DeGaine is over there to make sure he's all right. But what a performance by Michael Mogard. But that man, Dan Bailey, so once fast. again gets in the straightaway, and it's see you later. You know, he just doesn't bobble at all in those turns. But, yeah, you give him any sort of distance, non-cutting, and he's just out of control. Look at Michael Mogard. I mean, just every step you can tell it's hurting him. Gets around. How did he do that? And just grimacing at Michael Mogard. Did you see? He grimaced around that cone as he opened up, and then he was able to open up all the way through and actually slid through the finish line. He just edges out Wes Pyatt for the final spot in the finals. 
One more semifinal heat to go, and plenty of big names here Smith, Panchik, and Hendren. We're underway. Three more men will punch their tickets to the finals here. And it looks like it's going to be Marcus Hendren in the middle of the field, Hendren Panchik, and maybe Ben Smith. Wow. But it was close. Smith and Gamboa were neck and neck. David Levy was also in contention as well. But Hendren, Smith, and Panchik all moving on. So Ben Smith got another chance. And he made the best of it. So Ben Smith ran this course one more time than everyone else, but he's going to the finals. So fast. I'll tell you what, Marcus Hendren looked unbelievable. So quick. I mean, he barely even touched any of those other pilots except for the last one. Marcus Hendren. Look at how far line. ahead. Great stride there by Smith. And then Pancha came up short and almost, almost didn't make that did one. Did not make it. That final step, you can see trying to reach across the finish line, but he came up short. But Pancha finished in the top three. That's all that matters. Look at Marcus Hendren. Under 11 seconds, 10.9 for him, and Ben Smith at 11.1. Yeah, Marcus, that's the fastest time today out of all the heats. And I'll tell you what, Justin Allen and Ben Smith, the way those guys moved on the last two, I wonder the fact that they got to actually do an extra sprint and not cool down, not tighten up. That actually may have done well for them because that that right there was fast for Ben Smith. That was a great run. Man, got him in the finals. Michael Mogard talking with Rory McKernan. Mogard just, I am extremely impressed that he was able to get himself into the finals. I mean, you if you've ever injured a hamstring, you know just how terrible that is to deal with. I don't know how he was able to stretch out and stride out on that at all. You saw him bobble on that, but it looks like I don't know if he's too happy right now. <laughs> well, Rory McKernan just got done talking with Michael Mogard. Rory, what's the latest down there? Yeah, actually, guys, I've got Michael here with me, and, uh, you know, he said on the very first one, Michael, you, you felt it go. Tell me what that was like. Yeah, I mean, anybody who's pulled a hamstring knows the feeling. It didn't full on tear, uh, you know, where it, like, popped, but it seized up enough where I knew there was no, there's no coming back. <laughs> it was gone. And I heard you talking to the medical team. You were saying, look, just wrap it as tight as you possibly can. Yeah, because they've got these little flimsy things. And if we get one of those floss bands on there, just so I, you know, almost cut off the circulation, I'll be able to get through it uh, for one more. Okay. I wasn't expecting to, to qualify in that last one. I was kind of hobbling through. <laughs> Somehow got through. I don't know how. Just blocking out the pain? Yes. Yeah, I okay. guess so. And so we're going for it now and just looking one one race at a time. Is that what your your, your uh, strategy is? Oh, we just got one left, right? So now it's really easy to block out the pain because, you know, there's only one to go. So shouldn't be a problem. Great. Good luck to you, Michael. So Michael Mogar continuing to gut through the pain. And I mean, there could be two more. We don't know if there's a if there's a tie down to a thousand the second. We'll run some people out there and we'll run the course again. But right now, Michael Mogard banking on only have to run this course one more time, trying to do his best to just stretch out his injured hamstrings. You know, I think that's great that he's able to push himself through. What he has to remember is he's in, trying to be in here for the long haul, not just for the sprint competition. So he's played so well. He's in the top six. It may be to his advantage for the entire event to sit this one out so he can come in come in and attack tonight. You know that they're going to need hamstrings for the rest of these events throughout the weekend, so may not be the idea to do that. But you know what? Again, go out fighting. That's what athletes do, and that's what he's doing right now. So crank those, crank down that tape and... 3-2-1-go, right? Michael Mogard, the way he was running reminds me of Kirk Gibson in that World Series against the Oakland A's, that famous home run where he can barely hobble around the bases, <laughs> but Mogard's going to give it another try. And here, who he's, here, who, here is who he's going to face. Asia Bartow, Ben Smith, Marcus Hendren, Dan Bailey's got to be the favorite here with that speed, and Scott Panchik as well, but don't forget about Marcus Hendren. Marcus Hendren had a 10 second point, 10.9 second sprint, the fastest one out of, out of all of the heats so far, so it is going to be insane to watch Marcus, Dan, and Scott side by side. It, the, the speed is going to be just incredible. Yeah, Bailey and Hendren in lanes three and four. Bailey in lane four, Hendren in lane three, and then Scott Panchik outside of them in lane five. $100, wow. $3,000 on the line. Marcus Hendren in the middle battling out with Dan Bailey. Asia Bartow is there as well. Michael Mogard once again hanging. It's Bailey, it's Hendren. We're gonna have to go to the chip. That was a photo finish. Bailey and Hendren made 
have tied for first, and it's going to be Dan Bailey just edging out. Marcus Hendren, Asia Bartow will finish third, Scott Panchikin fourth, Michael Mogard beating Ben wow. Smith. Didn't you see that? He actually dove across the finish line. He didn't even run across the finish line. I don't know how that guy's hamstrings are even hanging on right now. That is impressive. The fifth fastest guy that we have here. Both legs are taped. I mean, look at him. You would not know it from watching that start. I mean, he was a little ginger around those, uh, that first pylon. But I mean, look at that effort. I know Dan Bailey's running away with this thing, but then the baseball slide head first from Michael Mogard, the former Iowa baseball player, going back to his past. But that's how close wow. that finish was. Asia Bartow was also up there as well. But it's Dan Bailey just edging out Marcus Hendren despite this. Yeah, how do you pull that off? That speed right there. What impressed me most about Dan was his start. He was so fast and explosive. But again, I mean, he's been doing this right here the entire, the entire event. Just straight blasting speed. Marcus Hendren finished second and had one of his best performances so far in this zigzag run. And look at the effort from Michael Mogart. I mean, oh, I just hurt watching this. Oh, that just, it, that kills me to watch that too. That's so impressive, but man, you know it hurts. Every athlete knows what a pulled hamstring feels like, and he's got two of them. Not good. So here you go. We had to go into the hundreds and thousands of seconds. Dan Bailey and Marcus Hendren both tying for first place. So Asia Bartow will get third, Scott Panchikin fourth, Michael Mogard with that just gutsy, gutsy performance finishes fifth, and then it's Ben Smith in sixth place. So 100 points each for both Bailey and Hendren. Once again, what I love about this particular event though, it was all out sprint. We've been slamming these guys with cardio stuff, long rows, long runs, long events, and then it's just all out speed. But look at this finish right here. Hendren is right next to Bailey and they just cross at exactly the same time. From this angle right here, it looks like Marcus has that. You know, it may be the fact that the chip on the, if it's on the right leg, that may have been the leg that cut it. Because Marcus's left leg came across first, but if it was on his other leg, that's what it's going to read. So we're still sorting so this fast. out. But it looks like Marcus Hendren may be getting credit for the win, edging out Bailey. But right now, officially, we have Bailey and Hendren in a dead tie for first place. Hendren is in those black and white shorts with his shirt off there at the top of your screen and right next to him was Dan Bailey. And it looks like Hendren from this video may have just crossed by a fraction of a second ahead of Dan Bailey. Again, officially they are listed as a tie for first place. Regardless, Bailey needed a strong finish here. He came in ranked 36th overall in this competition after four events. So Bailey helping himself, Marcus Hendrick came in 20th overall. So no shortage of excitement here at the soccer field in the StubHub Center. More from Carson, California, the 2013 Reebok CrossFit Games when we return.